In the previous video, I pointed out that that H solution coefficient could actually be defined in terms of the E solution coefficient. And so this is an important relationship, and we end up calling this the intrinsic impedance. And it makes sense that we might like to use this intrinsic impedance because we did the same thing for transmission lines, where at the transmission line we saw, oh, well, we can uh, rewrite this coefficient in terms of a characteristic impedance. Well, for the um, electric and magnetic field, we'll do the same thing, where we write it in terms of uh, a impedance. And so we'll define this eta, instead of taking this k omega mu, we're going to define an eta, which is an intrinsic impedance. Okay, and we can see that the characteristic impedance and the intrinsic impedance kind of serve a, a very similar function. Now, this leads us to a bit more of a compact uh, written relationship for the electric and the magnetic field. Now, from the phaser, right, we can then convert these to the instantaneous domain. And this is something that's been common in our electromagnetics class, is that when we, we, we like to be able to go back and forth between phasers and instantaneous waves. And so for this, we will go from the phaser to the instantaneous wave. And we can see that there is an ampl uh, amplitude in the front. Uh, it's lossless, right? This is not decreasing. This is a constant. Then we have omega t minus kz. Now, what happens if we compare this right to the so-called like standard waveform that we were originally introduced? We can see that there is some of these are this uh, look to be the same, but we also don't know where this is. So, what happened to this uh, reference phase? Well, we can see that the reference phase is actually going to come from the original coefficient that we had. So that original coefficient. We were sort of uh, naively assuming that that was a real number, but in fact, right, that reference could have both a magnitude and a phase. If you write it this way, we can see that because it's j omega, when we perform our operation to convert into instantaneous domain, we can see that this j, um, or sorry, this j phi term is going to give us that reference phase that we are missing. So going forward, we can see now, okay, we do have the reference phase. So now we have all of the same terms that we have in our electric field as we have in our standard wave. And we can see that the same thing would be true for the magnetic field because this um, E coefficient would give us that same reference phase for the magnetic field. Okay, so now we see that in the electric and magnetic field, we have the same frequency, we have the same K, that wave number, we have the same phase. So we will call these two things, the electric and magnetic field for this. Um, lossless plane wave that's uh, TEM mode, we say that the, these two things are in phase. Okay, and for the um, this lossless case, right, we've reduced our gamma into a K, and we can define this for the lossless case. All right, now, because of this, right, we had for the standard wave, we had a bunch of different relationships between uh, wave numbers, frequencies, um, wavelengths, and we can make uh, many of those same relationships for the electric and magnetic field that we derived for any wave. And these are uh, a sample of them. You can find more in your textbook. You may be able even be able to derive a few more relationships. And one other thing that we should specifically note is that for this special case where we have um, the relative permittivity and permeability is equal to one, this means that our wave is going to be traveling at the speed of light. The velocity of propagation would be equal to the speed of light for the EM wave. And uh, this, this, these relationships continue to hold true. And then for the intrinsic impedance, we have this other case where we can reduce it down to mu over epsilon. And again, if we had the mu and epsilon relative equal one, this is another special case, right? We're traveling in uh, free space or air, you might say, in that uh, has this intrinsic impedance of 377 ohms or about 120 pi as you may also see this written. Thank you and see you in the next video.